Hi, today let us discuss the calculations on one compartment model. What is one compartment model? For example, we have given the drug and this drug is going to be entering into the blood and from the blood drug can enter into the liver through the enterohepatic circulation. So here the drug is going to be metabolized by the first pass effect. Again after the metabolism, what are the drug that is unchanged and not metabolized within the liver that again reaches into the systemic circulation. And what are the drug that is present in the systemic circulation can be distributed into the various organs like the heart, otherwise it can be reached into the lungs or it can enter into the CNS based on the nature of the drug. So after the first pass metabolism, the drug is going to be distributed based on its lipophilicity and volume of distribution. And finally, the drug can also be entering into the kidney where it is going to be excreted within the urine. So this is the fate of the drug that is going to be entering into the body. If the distribution of the drug into the various organs is instantaneous, then we can consider kinetics of the drug as one compartment model. That means the drug distribution into the various organs is very rapid and all the organs represent a single compartment then we can consider the kinetics as one compartment model. So today in this video we will see what are the kinetics involved with the one compartment model and how we can solve few of the problems in the one compartment model. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel and post your comments in the comment box. So compartment modeling is a hypothetical condition where we are thinking that the drug is going to be distributed into the different uh, compartments according to the type of compartment model. For example, in one compartment model, all the organs are collectively considered as single compartment. So distribution of the drug from the one organ to the other organ is instantaneous. And third one, the drug is eliminated from the central compartment. Particularly in the one compartment model, we have only one compartment and from that the drug is going to be eliminated. So by taking these assumptions, now we will see what are the pharmacokinetics involved with the one compartment model. X0 is the amount of the drug that is we are going to initially administer into the body. And now this drug is going to be entering into the single compartment where the amount of the drug can be indicated by Xc. And again the drug can be eliminated out of the body from the same compartment. So this is a simple design of one compartment model and here we can also have an another phase where the drug can be entered into the systemic circulation through a barrier. This barrier is nothing but the absorption phase. The presence of absorption phase depends on the route of administration of the drug. If the drug is given by IV route, absorption phase is not present but if it is given by the extravascular route, we can observe the absorption phase. So now if you see the kinetics of compartment model, we can discuss this kinetics in three categories based on the route of administration like IV bolus administration or IV infusion or finally extravascular administration. So in this video, we will see mainly the IV route of administration where the drug can be given by as a bolus administration that is a single administration or by infusion that means continuous administration. So let us go with the first one, one compartment model IV bolus administration. Now the drug X0 is going to be administered into the body where X is the amount of the drug that reached into the single compartment and then the drug is going to be eliminated. Since the drug is given by IV bolus administration that means the drug is given at a single dose which directly enters into the single compartment so there is no kinetic is involved during the administration. But the drug is going to be eliminated from the single compartment where the elimination of the drug depends on the elimination rate constant K. Now the elimination follows first order kinetics. So based on that the rate of elimination is minus dx by dt is equal to k into x. So in a simple way one compartment model IV bolus administration follows first order kinetics because there is no absorption. Here the kinetics of the drug only depends on the elimination which follows the first order kinetics. Now the equation for this uh, one compartment model IV bolus can also be written as x is equal to x0 into e to the power of minus ke into t. When we integrate the equation we will get this equation x is equal to x0 into e to the power of minus ke into t. What is x here? x is the amount of the drug in the body at time t. But actually we will measure the drug levels within the plasma as a concentration. So this equation can also be converted into concentration terms where C is equal to C0 into e to the power of minus Ke into T. C is the concentration of the drug in the body at 
time t. How this is possible? Because we have one of parameter volume of distribution which is going to relate the amount of the drug in the body with the concentration of the drug in the body. So we know this equation x is equal to vd into c where vd is the volume of distribution. So x is always directly proportional to concentration. So amount of the drug in the plasma is directly proportional to the concentration of the drug in the plasma. So based on that we can write c is equal to c naught into e to the power of minus k into t. So this equation is sufficient to define the kinetics of uh, drug in the one compartment model IV bolus administration. So let us go with one working example and let us see how we can solve the problem. Working example one. 500 mg of a drug is given by IV bolus administration and has shown the following pharmaco kinetics. Calculate the concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours. So what are the equation given is C is equal to 20 into e to the power of minus 0.57 into t. Now what is this equation? So just by seeing this equation, we can see that this drug is going to follow the first order kinetics because it is just like the equation C is equal to C naught into e to the power of minus k into t. So based on that we can draw what is C naught. So from this equation we can call C naught is equal to 20. But what are the units? We are always measuring the drug concentration in the plasma as microgram per ml. So the what are the units are microgram per ml. So C naught is equal to 20 microgram per ml. And what is K? K is equal to 0.57. And again what are the units? Because we are going to see the time interval within the body in terms of hours. So K will be 0.57 R inverse. So this is the data that is given and we have to calculate the plasma concentration after 4 hours. So let us go with the solution. The solution to the working example 1. So what are the data given is C0 is equal to 20 microgram per ml and K is equal to 0.57 R inverse. So we have to calculate the C4 that is what are the concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours. So which equation we have to use? So this drug follows the first order kinetics. So C is equal to C0 into e to the power of minus K into T. But this is not convenient if we convert into the logarithmic form then T is equal to 2.303 by KE into log of C0 by C. So by using this equation we can calculate what is the concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours. So here T is equal to the time interval that is 4 hours and K is equal to 0.57 and C0 is equal to 20 microgram per ml. So by substituting all the values 4 is equal to 2.303 by 0.57 into log of 20 by C where 20 is the C0 and C is the what are the concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours which we have to calculate. So now by solving this 2.303 by 0.57 will give 4.04 .04, and which is then multiplied by log 20 by C otherwise log 20 by C is equal to 1 because uh, 4 by 4.04 .04 is approximately equal to 1. So log 20 by C is equal to 1 and if you take the anti logarithm 20 by C is equal to 10 to the power of 1 otherwise 10 and then C is equal to 20 by 10 that is equal to 2. So concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours is the 2. But what are the units? Since we have taken the units as microgram per ml so here again the same units will be applied. So the concentration of the drug in the plasma after 4 hours are the 2 microgram per ml. Let's go with another example. From the above drug calculate half-life, volume of distribution and what will be the time for the next dose if minimum plasma concentration is to be above the 1 microgram per ml. That means we have to take the data of the drug of in the previous question and we have to calculate the half-life, volume of distribution and what is the next dosing interval. So here first of all let us calculate the half-life. We know the half-life T half is equal to 0 0.693 by KE. So already we know the KE value. KE is given as 0.57 R inverse. So we can directly substitute in this equation. So T half is equal to 0.693 by 0.57 which gives the 1.22 R. So the given drug is having half-life of 1.22 R. Similarly second one is a volume of distribution. How we can calculate the volume of distribution? Already we have seen one of the equation the X is equal to VD into C. So this equation we can use to calculate the volume of distribution. Otherwise now volume of distribution is equal to 
X naught by C naught. So we know the X naught. X naught is the amount of the drug initial we have administered into the body. That is a 500 mg. And C naught. C naught is the 20 microgram per ml. And here you can observe that the units are not uh, similar. The X naught is in the mg, but C naught is in the microgram. So we can convert this microgram into the mg. We know that uh, one mg is equal to thousand micrograms. Then we can simultaneously convert the ml into the liter, because you know again the one liter is equal to thousand ml. So this twenty microgram per ml is nothing but the twenty mg per liter. Now the units are similar and we can apply this equation. So volume of distribution VD is equal to 500 by 20, which is nothing but 25 liters. So the drug is having the 25 liters of uh, volume of distribution. Now let us go with the calculation of the next dose that should be given to achieve a desired plasma concentration. So here the initial concentration of the drug is 20 microgram per ml. And what are the desired concentration is the one microgram per ml. So that means the drug level should be always above the one microgram per ml. Now if we calculate what is the time required for this drug to reduce its concentration from the 20 microgram per ml to one microgram per ml, we can easily assess what is the time required for the next dose. So here we have to calculate what is the time for this uh, reduction of the concentration from 20 to one microgram per ml. So which equation we have to use? Again, we can use the same equation T is equal to 2.303 by K into log of C naught by C. And here we have to calculate that T value. So applying in this equation, T is equal to 2.303 by here K is already given as 0.57. So by 0.57 into log of 20 by 1. 20 is the initial concentration and 1 is the final concentration. 2.303 by 0.57 will give us the 4.04 already we have calculated and log 20 is nothing but the 1.301. So now this is 4.04 into 1.301 and finally if we calculate we will get 5.26 hours. That means this drug requires 5.26 hours to reduce its plasma concentration from 20 microgram per ml to the 1 microgram per ml. So if we want to maintain the minimum concentration of 1 microgram per ml, we have to give the next dose of the drug less than 5.26 hours. In this way, we can easily assess what is the dosing interval we have to maintain for a drug when it is given by IV bolus administration. Now let's go with the working example three. So here we have given the dose of the drug as XL and we are going to administer the drug into the body and where we are going to give the drug continuously by IV infusion. And uh, we require the steady state concentration CSS as 0.1 microgram per ml. And then the drug is going to be eliminated from the single compartment where the volume of distribution is 20 liters and half life is uh, around 12 hours. So with the data given here, calculate the following, the value of the Q and value of the XL. Again, by just seeing this diagram, we can easily say that this is one compartment model because the drug is given by IV infusion it will have some Q value that is indicates the infusion rate or rate of infusion. The drug is given at a particular rate of infusion so that uh, the steady state concentration is going to be maintained. And what is XL? XL is the loading dose. In order to achieve the steady state concentration immediately, we are giving a loading dose. So with this data, we have to calculate what is the rate of infusion and what is the loading dose of the drug. So this is an example of a drug following the one compartment model, IV infusion. Solution to the working example three, which equation we have to follow. So here the change of the drug in the single compartment depends on two factors. Here we are going to administer the drug continuously. That means it depends on the rate of infusion. Similarly, the drug is going to be eliminated out of the body, which depends on the rate of elimination. So dx by dt is equal to Q minus K into X, where Q indicates the rate of infusion, which is a zero order. Because we are always giving the infusion at a constant rate, it follows the zero order. And minus K into X, K into X indicates the elimination, which follows the first order. So simply the rate of change of the drug in the plasma DX by DT is equal to the rate of input minus rate of output. That means Q minus K into X. 
on integrating the equation becomes c is equal to css into 1 minus e to the power of minus ke into t. So what is the CSS? CSS is the steady state concentration which can be given as CSS is equal to Q by CL. That is a Q is the rate of infusion and CL is the clearance. So steady state concentration is equal to rate of infusion by clearance. Now let us calculate the rate of infusion. So here CSS is equal to Q by clearance where Q is the rate of infusion. Then what is a Q? Q is equal to CSS into clearance. But here in the data we have not given with the clearance value. Then we can expand this equation. So Q is equal to CSS into clearance can be written as KE into VD. But again the KE is again not given, half life is given. So now we can further expand this equation. This is equal to CSS into 0.693 by T half because K is equal to 0.693 by T half. So we can write like this into VD. Now we have the VD value as 20 liters and CSS as 0.1 microgram per ml. But again, the volume of distribution is given in the liters, but the CSS is given in terms of milliliters. So we have to convert into the similar units. So this 0.1 microgram per ml can also be written as 0.1 mg per liter. And then T half is given as 12 hours. So by substituting these values in the equation, so Q will be 0.1 into 0.693 by 12 into 20. So by solving this we will get 0.116 mg per hour. So the rate of infusion should be 0.116 mg per hour. Next let us calculate the loading dose. How we can get the loading dose? The loading dose can be given as XL is equal to VD into CSS. So now VD is given as 20 liters and CSS is given as 0.1 microgram per ml. Again, we have to convert the units, which is equal to 0.1 mg per liter. And we can directly substitute in this equation. So XL is equal to 20 into 0.1. So which gives 2 mg as the loading dose. So we have to enter, we have to give it loading dose of 2 mg in order to achieve the steady state concentration of 0.1 microgram per ml immediately. In this way, in one compartment model, the rate equation depends on the route of administration we can give the drug by either IV route or extravascular route. Within the IV route, we can give the drug as a single administration like a bolus administration. Otherwise, we can give as a continuous administration such as IV infusion. In case of IV, sing IV bolus administration, the kinetics of the drug just follows the first order kinetics because the change of the drug in the plasma depends on the only elimination. Similarly, in case of IV infusion, the rate equation can be written as rate of input minus rate of output, which is nothing but Q minus K into X. Otherwise, by integrating, we can call the C is equal to CSS into 1 minus e to the power of minus K into T. And sometimes we can also give the loading dose such that we can achieve the steady state concentration immediately. So that's about this uh, one compartment model IV root administration and hope you have enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching